This is Sigmund Freud, Perry's therapist. Yeah, Perry so screwed up. He needs me, Sigmund Freud, as his therapist. He brought me out of retirement here in hell. My friends, Perry Logan is in a very strange state. I'm afraid Mr. Logan suffers from half happiness, not to be mistaken for half arsedness. Yeah. I'm treating Perry for his strongly mixed feelings. Here on November 8th, 2012, when the Republicans have suffered a humiliating and resounding defeat, their noses broken, oh. their teeth snapped, Ew. their ears torn off, their eyeballs gouged. <laughs> it's the cocaine! It's the cocaine! Woo! You understand I'm totally kidding about the cocaine? My friends in this show, Mr. Logan, grapples with the complicated feelings that come from an election which, in some ways, pleases Perry no end. It's always good to enjoy the Republicans' suffering, yes? Yes, Sigmund! I'm in therapy with Sigmund, all right? Now you know! I'm a troubled man, okay. Uh, uh, by the way, Sigmund, you know, we're talking about a political happiness and sadness, and, and we're not in any way uh, talking about one's personal life where I hope I would, you know, I know it's not true, but I would hope we were all happy. I would just hope we would all be in bliss. Woo! Like me, in our personal lives. My head. My brain, if you will. Yay! Floating with green endorphins. Uh, hi! We're the green endorphins in Perry Logan's brain. Perry Logan's brain really is flowing with green endorphins because Perry voted green. He voted for the beautiful Jill Stein, who is very fine. Please don't get me started. Now please don't beat me up for saying this. And it is as Perry said before the election. To vote democratic is to be filled with angst, ennui, regret, pain, mucus, spittle, poop, pee, caca, 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 Just a quick, to ready a moment. Now back to the show. Perry! Why are you only, only, only half happy? Perry, why are you only, only, only half happy? Only, only, only half happy? Hey, Sigmund, uh, since when do we have our sessions on my show? Perry, you are in a most strange and interesting state of mind, especially to someone like me, who is so very, very high on cocaine! <laughs> Sigmund, are you okay? Yeah, Perry, I was pulling your leg. Why are you only, only, only half happy? On November 8th, 2012, I'm at least kind of happy because the Republicans have suffered a humiliating electoral defeat. Let's all enjoy that humiliating Republican electoral defeat. To hit you with the dark gun again, the Republicans are broken and bleeding on their knees, Yay! humiliated beyond belief, destroyed, reduced as it were to little fragments of rotten flesh, crawling with nuggets of the bloody sidewalk. Is the cookie talking, goddammit? Santa, Santa! The Republicans totally defeated in this way. Why are you, Perry Logan, only half happy? This is what they are probing at. Yeah? No. Oh, it's very simple, Sigmund. I am sorry about having uh, one of my uh, therapy sessions on the air. Now you know. Okay. Okay. Well, it is November 8th, 2012. The Republicans are... Oh, wow. Mm. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah, you know, it, it, here's the funny thing, you know, we're liberals, and it's like, well, we're not that good at gloating, are we? We're, we can gloat. We're, you know, we can gloat. Oh, but imagine the gloating if the Republicans had won. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Don't imagine it, okay? Now, excuse me. If there are children in the room, do not do this. Do not imagine the gloating of Republicans. I'll bet Rush Limbaugh would strip naked and do a sexy hoochie coo like this. Take it, Sarah. <laughs> I'm sorry, we were visiting a parallel universe. That's a way of doing an, illustri an illustrative example. In the parallel universe, there is one. You know, they really say there's, there are parallel universes, so it's not just job, it's science. This is physics, goddammit! Physics, I say! I'm gonna shoot myself doing that one of these days. Hi. Are you a Republican? I know you're hurting, but you, you just got to get some guns and get down into your basement and stay there! Stay! Stay! One moment, please. Mr. Logan is amusing himself. Please have all children removed from the room. Uh, Perry, uh, you seem to be evading the question. Why are you half, half happy? Well, because I wanted both guys to lose. <laughs> Hey, I voted for Jill Stein. Well, I did. I said I was going to, and I did. <laughs> okay, well, here's my point. <laughs> I'm half happy because I wanted both guys to lose. Totally simple. I feel now differently. The only thing going on with me, not that anyone asked, the only thing going on with me, not that one of you even bothered to ask. <laughs> the only thing going on with me, here on November 8th, 2012, is... <laughs> the only thing going on with me, here on November 8th, 2012, is pleasure. Pure, green pleasure. Even as I step over the crumpled bodies of Republicans so terribly humiliated. <laughs> That's the part I'm happy about. Listen, man, do not doubt for a moment, my friends, that I shared the fear of a Romney presidency. A lot of folks in political circles thought I was saying to vote for Romney, and you see, I have had to crush their heads. I have had to crush many a head like this. Symbolism, okay? It's like, it's like Moby Dick. It's a symbol. Symbolism. Uh, hey man, listen, I'm sorry about all that talk about head crushing. It was a kind of an unseemly symbol, I must admit. But uh, there are those, I don't know, maybe they're just stupid, who, who seem to think I was saying people should vote for Romney. And if there's any of you left, I'm coming after you. All kidding aside, all kidding aside. Hey, I have a doctor's note that says I'm half happy, right, Sigma? Oh yeah, Perry. Uh, Perry is half happy, which is a very, very tricky state of mind. You see, Perry wanted both guys to lose. You must never vote Republican, my friends. There you go. 
And now, Perry Logan and the Half Happy Band play Let's Get One Thing Straight. Story of my life. Story of my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Would you guys stop playing? Sometimes I cannot get the band to stop playing. Not to get confessional or anything, but sometimes I think the guys in the Perry Logan band are just a little bit crazy. Like this. Okay, okay, just a little symbolism, didn't mean to scare you, but let's get one thing straight. Uh, we're talking about political, po let's get one thing straight. I am talking in this show about political happiness. Politically half happy. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of high. I'm high on the endorphins that came from voting for Jill Stein. Yay! From now on, my motto is, don't blame me, I voted for Jill Stein. <laughs> Well, it is as I say, voting for the progressive third party of your choice releases endorphins and is a whole lot better for your karma, baby. A whole lot better for your karma than voting for the drone guy. <coughs> the race card guy, whom I love. The wars in 70 countries, wars totally under nobody's supervision and all this neocon nightmare stuff. Right after the election, in all seriousness, and I am just talking a little bit about the mood of me and, and everyone right now, where it is quite true that the repubs have suffered a humiliating and well-deserved defeat, a resounding defeat, which I'm willing to enjoy. That's my half-happy part. <laughs> oh yeah, but don't forget, we're talking about we're talking about political happiness and you know I'm hoping you all like totally blissed out in your personal lives okay I realize the world does not work like that <laughs> but when I'm talking about being unhappy or, or displeased it's political okay. and I wish the same for you I'm perfectly fine but here in the political realm except for the endorphins in my brain yeah I'm kind of blissed out from the endorphins but from just a totally rational point of view, half happy because I wanted both guys to lose. <laughs> it's so hard to understand. <laughs> but uh, it would be my uh, nature to emphasize the happy stuff. There really was happy stuff. Uh, I did not foresee it. So much for uh, Perry Logan as Nostradamus. I think we. I think the whole. Perry Logan is Nostradamus thing is not going to happen. <laughs> I was deathly afraid the pubs would steal it. <laughs> okay, in hindsight, I realize I underestimated their ineptness. I underestimated their haplessness. Haplessness? Haplessness! Okay, so this is a, I'm very happy. <laughs> is it a very blissed out? I am just like totally blissed out. Half blissed out. I think possibly no. the big driving wheel. You wanna wanna hear my take on it? You're gonna hear my take on it. Of course you do. And my take on this last election, it was just, you know, among other things, a weird, a weird, weird election. And right now, the left are happy, the right are unhappy. And I think the thing that really pushed it over was the Republicans' overt attempts to suppress the vote. 
that's my take. I, I, I think that that was, oh, you know, the Republicans just did a laundry list of awful, dumb things. It was like they would, like, put up the one guy Obama could be. That, that was my take. <laughs> but they just outdid themselves. But the real kicker, I think, you see, because, you know, uh, Americans are not that keen on Obama. We all love him like a brother, but the approval ratings hadn't been so high. It's all right. It's all right. He's gone now, okay? He's gone now. Now it's me. Compulsion. It's a compulsion. But don't you see that if the repubs had won the election, uh, they would just be dancing and singing and laughing and popping champagne and doing some of those weird, perverted, sexual things you will always find right-wingers and Republicans doing behind closed doors. You didn't know this? Excuse me, clear the room. Except for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but we have cleared the auditorium. Except for you and me. And the technical crew. And the big technical crew. And the Perry Logan band. Oh, yeah! But the Republicans just really blatantly, I was talking about this the whole time up to the election, they just nakedly, you might say, and blatantly were suppressing the vote. You all know, ye historians of the future have, you know, who, who only knows how much cheating w w went on. And I was, I was very much on the record as saying, oh, we're gonna steal it, but like I say, I, I overestimated their, their uh, capabilities. <laughs> overestimated their capabilities. I do not know what that is. Just this guy who interrupts me. But uh, I wanted both guys to lose for reasons which I elucidate every now and then, as it pleases me. But. Nessus, nevertheless, the repubs made this terrible mistake of suppressing the vote or trying to suppress it and, you know, probably su succeeded and, oh, this did not sit well at all with the American voters, to their credit. And people, I think, you know, somewhat in response to the Republicans' own just, well, what did you think they were going to do? Hey, here's a tip. Uh, righties and right-wingers and bad people like that always kind of like underestimate the gumption of their victims. Just a, a thought that they just think people are going to take stuff lying down. Okay, well sometimes people take stuff lying down and sometimes they don't. And the voters, I just don't think they said, you're trying to do... What, 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 what? Now this after a campaign which was marked by lots of threats, it was like threats against uh, different factions of the public. It was like they were openly saying, we're going to ream you yeah. one by one. We're going to ream you two by two. <laughs> we're going to ream you, ream you, ream you through and through. Yeah. It was like they were saying that. I, it's my understanding that Mitt had no choice. For all his own ineptness that he just kind of brought to the table, uh, Mitt had no choice. He had to be talking that right wing, that far right lingo. Yeah. It was like, you know, oh, did they just practically, all you have to do 
if you want to destroy a Republican, is to get him to say something about women. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, here on November 8th, 2012, the Achilles heel of the once mighty Republican Party and the right in general in America has been revealed as women. Though it boasts many women, the Republican Party still has one hell of a woman problem. And a love affair with the famous that will not end. Yeah, I'm half happy. Wanna make something of it? Just kidding, calm down. I am politically half happy. Do it again, Perry. This time, try to have fun with it. Yeah, I'm politically half happy. Want to make something of it? <laughs> Calm down. Everyone is politically half happy at best. Oh, except for a few crazy obots. Never mind them. You see, part of my half happiness is based on uh, my belief that the left are going to be just terribly disappointed. So. Even though I am clearly not Nostradamus, I cannot help myself. Here goes another prediction. Okay, uh, first I will crush my head. Some of this is symbolic. <laughs> well, Here's, here's something that happens. Here's a phenomenon I've noticed, which I call the Dear Obama Letter. What I predict is that you're going to start seeing Dear Obama Letters in the lefty press. These are the folks I love, the lefty pragosphere, if you will, the pragosphere. And I actually have already seen one. Soon as Obama gets elected, here's what happens. Lefties start writing Dear Obama letters in which they say things like, Dear Obama! <laughs> Excuse me, could you, could you, could you do some of these things that a lefty would do? Could you like do something for the progressives here? Obama, can, could you do like anything progressive? Could you do like the slightest damn thing progressive? Could you stop with the drones? Could you like uh, like wind down the empire? No, no. Could you do the slightest lefty thing? Single pair? <laughs> Public option? <laughs> no. Effing mandate? <laughs> Dear Obama, please do something that a Democrat would do, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I am not totally making fun of those dear Obama letters. It's just kind of a natural thing for lefties to do, and there have been some really good ones where lefties, uh, progressives and lefties have been uh, writing like a nice little letter to Obama saying, come on, man, you've got to do something a Democrat from the past would do. You don't have to go very far. You can only go as far as Bill Clinton. Infamously a centrist Democrat, a guy I love, a centrist Democrat. And it's like they're, they're begging Obama, could you, I don't know, raise taxes on the rich? No, no. Oh, Obama, I can't help but notice you lowered taxes on the rich. Obama, could you like wind down that drone program? It's like murder, you know, it's like international murder. No, he's, he's winding it up. Oh my God, he's winding it up. I'm not gonna panic, I'm not gonna panic. Dear Obama, what's the deal? Are you, as Perry Logan says, a cent As are you, are you, as Perry Logan says, a neocon posing as a centrist Democrat? I'll leave you for that to decide. Obama, is that you? Yes, I've been turned by an evil spell.
into an empty chair, and I find I rather like it. Why are you here? That's my secret.